It takes a little while, but some I think that just is the name of the game with some bands, you know. Some bands like right off the bat when they come out the gate, you know, there a lot of people are into them. It's, I don't think there's really like a perfect formula. Everything just kind of it's just by chance, you know. I won't really say luck or anything like that. I just say by chance how things kind of roll out. I think for us, as far as Europe goes, it's taken us a little longer to kind of get out there and be noticed, but. I feel like what we're doing here now is kind of like what we did when we first started touring in the U.S. We're just building ourselves and presenting ourselves to people. I mean, and also, there's there's a lot of fucking bands out there, man. It's hard to keep up with shit. You know, everybody's always like, you know, talking about, well, I can't believe, you know, this and band sales and money and da da da. It's just like, yeah, but have you seen how many fucking metal bands there are out there? It's insane, you know? And even within metal and how it breaks down into a whole pyramid of, of different things and branches off into all these different side categories and things like that. It's like so many of them, man, it's hard. And, and not only that, kids and people have only so much money to spend. So, you know, you can't expect somebody to buy every single record that comes out every single week. But I did break my leg and I broke the third metatelis on this foot in late February last year when we were out here with Sepultura. A uh, ramp door to a trailer came down. Uh, they had this hydraulic system, it went out, it came, hit me in the head, threw me back, and it landed on my leg and foot. Uh, whatever, I stayed out, did the shows, sat on like a guitar head case, kind of tilted up. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do, I guess, you know, and keep the fucking metal going. But did you have a lot of medical bills from that? I have them still kind of rolling in, you know, but the, uh, I've been in touch with the bus company and they're supposed to take care of all that. It was funny because at first, after it happened, I kind of thought I did it because I do have this like bad luck streak of fucking myself up, but <laughs> afterwards they found out because later that night when I was at the hospital, they needed like five guys to open and close the ramp door when before you could use one person because of the hydraulic system. And they realized that the whole thing had went out and then they were like, all right, so there's a flaw here. Somebody somewhere is trying to get me, man. I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're too hard to kill. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, I got silver linings too because back in 2001 I had an accident, so I have rods in both legs. And so when the door hit my leg and broke it, it just broke the bone around the rod. Because when I was at the hospital, the lady told me, um, she goes, well, so this is broken, but the good thing is, is you already have a rod in there because if it, you didn't, we would have put a rod in your leg. So I was like, all right, silver linings, you know, great. I remember the Paris. first time I ever played Italy, there was the toilets where you, it had like foot spots and it was a hole and you kind of stood and you had to like squat over this hole to use it. So I was like, well is there a hook where I could take my pants off and hang my pants? Because I feel like I might shit in my pants trying to like sit kind of weird doing this. I don't know man, it's just, what's it's a thing, who knows? You what, know? What? I never really thought to sit there and go. Oh, it's all right. I never thought to go into the place afterwards and go. I don't have any toilet seats. In the toilet. Okay. I just figured it was a thing. Yeah. So I guess if you could think, because you've done a lot of touring, just off the top of your head, what's your worst worst tour situation where you went to go go do your business and you walk back there and you're like, fuck, and you're questioning whether or not you should do it at all. Oh, it was uh. Actually, it was a ways back. It was when CBGB's was open. If anybody remembers CBGB's or had been to CBGB's back in the day, you would go through the venue all the way to the back. There was a little little uh, path on the side of the stage that led to the back and went downstairs to the bathrooms. And in the men's bathroom, there was two pissers and one toilet, but the toilet was high, like you stepped up these steps to get to it. There was no door. So if you had to shit, you were basically shitting on a, a stage for everyone as they walked in to use a toilet. And man, if it was in the middle of the show, because <laughs> people were drinking and they're just coming in and out the toilet, and everybody, because as soon as you came down the stairs, it was like perfect view into the men's bathroom. So if you were taking a fucking crap, you were on the throne and you it was everybody. Girls, guys, everybody coming down to use the bathroom could see you sitting there trying to take a crap. <laughs> Worst experience. I remember if, if I had to play CBGBs, I would like, like I'd try to get it in my head to use the toilet before I had to get to the venue. <laughs> but I mean, the venue was great. It was just, man, just if you had to do the number two, it was just wrong in that place, just wrong.